this particular topic and program of Ableton on Air is partnered with Yankee Kingdom Media and WYKR. Coming up on this edition of Ableton on Air, we focus on radio communications and people with special needs. Plus, we, um, we talk to Joshua Smith, the, a man that came from the boardroom to the radio broadcast booth. All that and much more when Ableton on Air starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. On this edition, we focus on radio communications and people with special needs. Um, let's welcome Joshua Smith, um, CEO of Yankee Kingdom Media and WYKR. Uh, welcome, Josh, again to Ableton On Air. Yeah, it's great to be here again, Lawrence. It's fantastic to see you again. Okay, fantastic to see you again. Oh, throughout the whole pandemic, we're here. And uh, um, so you went from, so talk about um, the history of WYKR and why you decided to go into radio communication. Yeah, so I um, for for about eight years or so, as, as many of your viewers know, I was um, I was the executive director over at Green Mountain Support Services, which is an incredible organization, and one of the uh, one of the aspects of it is that we were doing a lot of um, uh, public service and advertising to, with local radio stations. One of them being my hometown radio station where I'm from, which is WYKR. Uh, which has been around since almost 50 years. And, um, and what, one of the aspects of it is that the, uh, uh, the, the owner, um, the family, Puffer Broadcasting, has been part of it. They are the ones that created it back in 1976. Um, we're looking to sell. And so they had some people that were looking at out-of-state conglomerates and people that wanted to come in and buy it, but they were very excited for the fact they are able to have somebody who is um, local to the area, um, where we're able to kind of carry on the, the, the mission and legacy of, of what a local radio station does. And, and so with my experience as well working in the disability field for uh, well over a decade, um, the ability to kind of take on the role of doing some level of, uh, you know, adjusting my, you know, passion for public service in a way to be able to um, uh, do that on a different platform was 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 really a, a, a big pull for me, um, and and as we we've mentioned before off the air, I've I've had a long history of working in, in broadcasting as well through um, internet radio for um, almost half a decade so far. So it was so it was it was a really good fit. It was a really good fit for me, and the uh, ability to uh, kind of continue along with uh, my mission and values and being able to do it in a different platform was, was, was good for me. Now let's talk about yeah. uh, the history of radio for people who yeah. don't know. Uh, uh, and then go into, first of all, radio is not dead. Right. Uh, um, what is the difference, before we get to the history, what's the difference between internet and radio? Because, you know, people with special needs are interested in a career in radio. Yeah. What's the difference between uh, internet radio and a regular radio station. Right, that's a good question. And one to bring up the point that you said radio is not dead. A as a matter of fact, radio, as of this year, celebrating its 100th anniversary, as of in 2023, radio has been around for um, uh, radio broadcasting has been around for over 100 years now. Um, and the and also too, just for your listeners and viewers to understand too, is that what makes local radio so powerful is that it is lit, that it's the only medium you can't pause, you can't fast forward. Um, local what do you television. Mean by that? Well, local television, if you're on through cable access, you can actually pause live television 
and go out and get a cup of coffee or come back and then unpause local television. And you can record it on a DVR. Right, exactly. That's the thing about local radio. Local radio, unless you actually record local radio as it goes, there's no aspect to do that. So what makes local radio powerful is that it is, um, it is the, it's the only medium that you are uh, 100% engaged with while you're listening. Um, you can't, as I say, so for those that are looking at, um, for, for any nonprofits out there or for any, uh, or for any businesses out there, um, local radio specifically is one of the best places to do advertising. And um, with that said, the, with, you know, with that said, as you talk about with issues with, with um, the difference between internet radio and, 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 and local radio, um, local radio, as we call terrestrial radio, radio that have um, AM frequencies or FM frequencies, fall under the FCC communications. You have to get a license from the FCC in order to so run. So let's talk about that for a minute. We've yeah. been talking about, you, you, okay, so you have to get a license, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you want to own a station, but internet radio, you don't. You don't. It is still, so internet radio does not fall under the uh, the FCC guidelines yet, so which means is that you can be a little bit more free with what you want to do, but there's very specific rules and regulations if you're running an FCC, um, uh, if you have an FCC license. One of them is that you have to uh, make sure that anybody, especially specifically, we're now in 2024. It's a political season. Which means that um, all radio stations have to oblige by letting um, federally people that are running for federal office to advertise on your radio station, and you have to give them the lowest price point that you've given somebody else because you can't show favorites. You can't have one party charge them more than another political party. You have to charge everybody the same amount. And the other thing that you have to do with an FCC license, which we talked about um, off the air about the public service announcements, mm -hmm. you are obligated, if you have an FCC license, to, to actually perform um, X amount of hours um, a year to uh, X amount of hours a year or a quarter a month to provide some, to provide some public service announcements. And like what? What type of uh, anything? It could uh, be uh, from a segment, a show, or commercials. It could be talking about the National Guard. It could be talking about you know cancer awareness. It could be about um, talking about people with disabilities. Talking about with people with like just you know doing any advocacy work with with people that are living with a disability. So there's a lot of things that you that are are part of that guidelines that you're able to do. And, and you bring up the point too, is like what makes that uh, the, the 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 beautiful thing about where we are now with our technology is that um, people people living with any levels of disabilities, the the accessibility factor uh, is so much better now than it was before. So you think about folks with um, think about folks now with the technology that are. Um, uh, uh, that might have hearing issues. Now there's a lot of places so that you have YouTube videos and other media have, um, are able to create auto-generated captioning. So people that have hearing issues are able to be a part of a conversation by seeing that happen. Talking about people that um, radio has always been a huge advocate for, for the blind um, because of the fact is, is that um, it's 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 an auditory platform. It's a, it's a platform that's able to do that. But then you get into the question about how do you access radio for people that uh, are, can't that do it that that are hard of hearing, and that's where it comes down to that. I really advocate and educate people that Facebook and social media should never be considered a competition to radio or television. Radio and television should be using social media as a tool to help promote the brand that a radio that that a radio. So station why? Is. So so since you said that, how, right? Why is that? Well, there's a few things. There's you think about a garden. So say for instance that uh, say you, you you're an apple orchard. So your primarily is growing apples. That's your job because it's called an apple orchard. We're called the radio station, so we, primi we primarily work with radio. 
But the the point in order for you to, to uh, diversify your income streams through for, through different mediums is going to where your listeners are. If your listeners are on the radio, you got to make sure you're on the radio. If your listeners are in the car or waiting in a in a are, are waiting in a doctor's office and they can't listen to the radio at that moment, then being able to make sure that you provide um, uh, complementary resources and information through your website or through a Facebook feed or through Instagram or some of those other p points as well. And that's where it comes down to where, where we mentioned too when it comes to um, working in the, you know, being an advocate for, for people in the disability field is that it's really important that you cannot passively or unintentionally discriminate between people's access points. So with that said is that we are very sure that we are, as a radio station, we are a um, uh, auditory platform. But it's extremely important for us to reach out to making sure that we provide some level of complementary uh, video ship or, or some complementary ways for um, people to see what we're what we're talking about as well so so let's um, talk about um, the history of radio but you, you know you said that radio is a, a hundred years old yeah um, you know years ago you had about you know um, stories such as the Superman radio hour, uh, even Idol of Lucy started as a radio and then went to TV. Um, and then you had Dragnet and others, including the most infamous one, War of the Worlds. Yeah. We, when we talk about news and war and things that are happening now, um, how has radio evolved? And you said radio is not dead, but, um, you know... Past, present, and future. How is it changing? So I the think about it from the perspective where you see what the thing that really brought local radio back a lot and just the radio is podcasts. Mm -hmm. People are now able to perform. People are now able to listen to things on demand. Listening to podcasts. There's literally right now hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there. People. It has democratized the medium for people what to. Does that be, work? It means that, uh, what I mean by that is that it's been able to allow anybody who has a microphone or even has a phone to make a podcast. So being able to create your own, be able to create your own uh, library of information through that and being able to then send it out to the world for people to, to listen to. Mm -hmm. And that's one Do of the- Do podcasts cost money? Does it cost money to have one? It, it depends on the platform. So it depends if, so if, say for instance, there's a few podcasting platforms that allow you to do it for free, but you're not in charge of the commercials, which means they might put a commercial on there that might be different from what your, your own personal values are. Um, if you want to pay for something, then it, you, you can pay for something, then you're in charge of everything about it. Think about some people will have a Spotify subscription. If you have a Spotify subscription and listen to your own music on demand, you can play any music you want to. But you can also listen to Spotify for free. But when you do, you're going to have commercials pop up every 30 minutes, which is going to interrupt you. And it might be a commercial you're not interested in. So if you're hosting, if you go on and decide to have your own podcast and you want to do it for free, you're, you're going to end up having advertising on there that you're not in control of. And it might be something that is um, not something that you purely believe in, whatever. So you could be a vegetarian. You could have a vegetarian podcast, and all of a sudden there's going to be a commercial for Oscar Mayer, Oscar Mayer Wieners on your... Oh, I forget his name, but there was a gentleman that was on radio for years, Arthur somebody that did a cooking show. On radio. Okay, yeah. And that was kind of, uh, there's several cooking shows on radio. Yeah. That, I mean, that's kind of hard because you don't, right. you don't, because uh, you don't, you know, see the food. Right. They talk about it. Right. And, I, and so it's, and so the, the benefit of podcasts is that it's easy for people to make their own podcasts. The hard mm. part about podcasts is that there is, as I said, there's hundreds and thousands of podcasts out there. 
the challenge of, of increasing your listenership um, is only through other people who listen to podcasts. Because if people that don't listen to podcasts aren't going to jump on podcasts. So the benefit of radio is everybody, everybody knows what a radio station, everybody knows what radio is. So the, the, the ability to get listeners to come on um, is, and be a part of that is way easier than it is to do podcasting. But the podcasting has a much shorter uh, doorway for people to walk, a, a much easier doorway for people to walk into. What is, um, now, I've researched, there are the countries that are doing radio and teaching radio for people with special needs. Ireland uh, has a, uh, a station, several. Uh, yeah. Then in Brazil, there's a situation, it's called La Colifata, and we've spoken about it on the show before, um, where psychiatric patients or psychiatric residents in a hospital do a, 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 TV, um, a radio program as part of their recreation and job. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's great. And so this is the point when we were talking about podcasts and also internet radio. Also, creating your own, creating your own internet radio station is something that actually um, is not overly complicated to do. And this is the point that I highly recommend people that listen to the radio and are interested in starting their own shows, whether they might be a as I say, they, they, they might be, you know, working in state government or working in nonprofits or working in uh, or, or, or doing anything. Any of your viewers and listeners out there, everybody that's listening and watching this, you yourself can actually create your own internet radio station. You can create your own podcast. And some people would say, well, What are I, some of the simple ways to do that so people... Yeah, there is. There's absolutely. And my, 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 first, my first recommendation for anybody out there to do that is just, just get on. We are living in an age now where you can access any information you want to at, at, at a click of a button. And so and I don't want to, I, I don't want to perf specifically direct anyone to a specific place, but I can tell you, all you have to do is get on the internet and do a search for um, internet, how to create your own internet radio station or how to create your own podcast. Because some people that might be watching this might be saying, well, this is my thing. I might love gardening or I might have a, a, a you know, I'm, I'm a disability advocate or whatever your thing is. And then, you, then the first thing you would say is you would get online and search and find that there is a hundred different people doing the exact same thing you are. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter because you know, they're not doing it in your voice. You might say it in a way that will actually then finally reach somebody's ears because you might have a different story. Everybody has their own stories to tell, and being able to say it in a different way might be able to inspire someone to take some action. And so that's where it's extremely important is that no matter what, everybody has, um, everybody has a mark they want to put on there. Everybody has a, a story to tell. So with that said, um, another option as well is finding the, and if you do find those, some of those podcasts or finding some of those radio stations that you actually uh, like a lot, here's the other thing that you can do. Instead of actually starting your own, reach out to that station, reach out to that station or reach out to that, that podcast and say, hey, can I be a guest? Can I come on and be a guest? If you have a story to tell, you'd be extremely surprised how easy it is to, uh, to get on some of those podcasts and get on some of those shows to talk. Because as I say, everybody here, it's, in, it's extremely important to stand behind the, the, the advocacy piece that you really feel strongly about and get on there and start talking to people about your story. And, and then from there, you could be inspired to start your own podcast or start your own show and, and start your own radio station. That's something that is not... It's not a heavy lift. So, say for instance, uh, uh, you know, a, a group of um, uh, just picking something like the Brain Injury Association or the Alzheimer's Association or or or, or a collection of of, of um, a, a collection of companies that that work with people with disability. Reach out to your colleagues and say, "Hey, let's start a radio station." It's not that hard, like to do that. I mean, it's. To, to the, the accessibility of actually getting the equipment and being able to do that stuff, that is such a great way to actually increase 
your not only of your 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 library of of your library of advocacy work, it also also increases great ways to do fundraising, great ways to do a lot of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are some of the misconceptions around? Uh, well, because I mean, you own a station. I yeah. mean, is it a big is it a big risk? Jumping into a pool per se and only a radio station for people that need that want to know. So starting an internet radio station, no, it's not. It's it's not a big risk at all because I'm saying you you oh, own but, but a, owning a terrestrial st radio station. Uh, it's first of all, you just can't start a radio station where you actually have to see if there's a vacancy, a geographic vacancy to do that. So that's the other thing because there's also, and so the FCC only allows certain radio stations to be created. Um, the, and I would say too is that uh, you see a lot of inner, you see a lot of radio stations that are starting to consolidate. That's why you're starting to see a lot of, uh, if you see a lot of our, our local, um, our, our local television stations around here are not locally owned anymore. They're owned by out of state conglomerates right yeah, now. Like they're like all Craig. owned by Hearst Media. There's all there's Craig Communications. Craig communi they're all owned by by larger organizations is because um, that it's it's extremely important that if you're looking at getting a radio station, you have first of all you'd want to find one that's already in existing that you could purchase. Um, and the other thing too is consistently looking towards the future of what is uh, what's going to happen in 10 years with local radio? What's going to happen in 15 years with local radio? What's going to happen in, two, in, in... So you have to be thinking consistently future-oriented on what that's going to look like. Um, and, and, and as I say, and the other piece too is making sure that you are... Uh, what makes you different than the other, other radio stations as well? And that's the other point that's going to be extremely important. Um, and... And also, too, this is the, 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 the beautiful part about this is, is that, um, as I was saying before, is that... So starting, starting an internet radio station is easier than having a regular radio station. Right, correct. Because you can be... There's less overhead. There's less overhead. And also, the other benefit about internet radio is that it's, um, by default, anybody anywhere in the world can listen to you. So that's the other benefit of internet radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what? So take me through a typical day. You're the station manager. What happens? Well, so I I wake up at five o'clock in the morning to make sure that I get to the radio station by six thirty. There are some DJs that wake up at three a.m. Yeah, there are. So yeah. So um, and and usually what it is is like there is. So there the, the four aspects. The four aspects of of radio is engineering. Like knowing actually how the towers work and how all the pro, how all the computers and the and the the control boards and all that stuff work. So the engineering piece that has to be top top of the mark. The other point too, which is the um, just the the running of the business perspective. So the administrative aspects of that is also important. The other one is then is the programming and like in the on air personality. So the actual programming of what's being played on the radio is important. Um, and then the fourth part is sales, because uh, you can't run a radio station for free, so everything is based off of advertising. So those are the four Why are aspects. things based off of it? So is that so? Advertising is a revenue stream, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because uh, that's how you because that is the 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 literally the only way. Um, a radio station makes money is through advertising. Um, when you're working in the private sector, there's no grants or there's no that there's none of that stuff. Those contracts aren't available. So that's why what you'll usually see a lot too is that there is any programming that you'll see on there is usually done through what they call a barter system, where like for instance we run say for instance that you know we would run the uh, Say, the, the the old farmer's almanac, for instance, does a two minute uh, thing that they send you, um, and if you want to, if you get it for free, then they expect you to run their commercials during that there. 
So, so that's kind of like what you'd get is like, so is you get some barter situations, but you also is that you also think about it from the perspective of a newspaper. Newspapers have to sell their ads. That's how they get, if it's a free newspaper, if you like here that we, where we are right now here in, in Montpelier, you've got the world. You can go in there and pick up the world, and it is we free. We also have the bridge. The bri and it's, and it's, and is the bridge free? Mm -hmm. So that was say, so the reason why it's free is because they have advertising in there so that you're able to, uh, so the advertising works. In seven for, days also. Yep, and the, the way that works is that they're able to put in their ads um, to pay for that newspaper for being free. That's the same thing as radio. Radio is free. And to, you, you don't have to pay to listen to the local radio. But in order for the local radio to run, they have advertising in there to make sure they can keep the lights on. Um, okay, so uh, what didn't we cover that's important for people to? I, so I, I really, I, I, I truly believe that uh, the point of um, radio and media itself Need, is it's really really important for people to realize that it's it, it's accessible to anyone, and if you feel like that that it's not accessible, that's where it's really important to to speak out and say, um, I want to hear this voice here, or I can't access this. So that's one of the one of the main major points about that is that uh, that it's the benefit. I was to say like to the the benefit of radio. Um, and the benefit of media in general is that it is uh, it gives it gives a new way for people to really talk about their advocacy and talk about their issues. Um, and the point of radio is to, as we always say, the point of radio is to educate, entertain, and inform. And those are the three things that even with media is even what what Lawrence you do here mm -hmm. is you educate, entertain, and inform. And being able to make sure that you that as a as a station and as a uh, as a uh, a company that you know own a, own a media company that our job is to do those three things to as many people as possible. Well, um, I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Den on Air. Thank you very much. Uh, for more information on WYKR and its programming, you can go to www.wykr.com. And um, uh, where can people turn for Yankee Kingdom Media? If they yeah, want? so that is, so yeah, that's my, so as the, the, the parent company of WYKR is Yankee Kingdom Media. Um, and we do have a website that's not up yet, but you can follow us on, f follow WYKR on Facebook. You can follow us, go to wykr.com. Um, and you can listen to us. No matter where you are in the world, you can actually listen to WYKR. And it's WYKR and WTWN. WTWN is our AM, yes, our AM channel. But it's all the same, it's all the same station right now. So you can go to WYKR.com and hear, if you like country music, that's what we play. And we have a lot of other community-related stuff there, too. Okay. For more information on WYKR, you can go to www. Uh, wykr.com that's www.wykr.com and for more information on Able Den On Air and what you've seen today and other programs you can go to www.orcamedia.net um, that's www.orcamedia.net and if you want to find out more information on our new blog post you can go to uh, blogspot, www.blogger.com. The Able Den On Air newspaper blog, www.blogger.com. This has been, um, this has been Able Den On Air. See you next time. You're listening to WYKR. This particular topic and program of Ableton on Air is partnered with Yankee Kingdom Media and WYKR.